From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 7, streaming now. And now at 7, Indiana's public health emergency will continue through the end of the year. Because of the skyrocketing spread of COVID-19, Governor Eric Holcomb signed an executive order today extending the emergency order through the end of the month, but it's likely that will be extended again. Today, the governor and first lady finished their quarantine period, which began two weeks ago after members of their security detail tested positive. Both tested negative for COVID, but remained in quarantine as a precaution. Today, the State Department of Health's update included the biggest single day increase in COVID-19 deaths. 64 of those deaths occurred between Sunday and Monday. At least 1,416 people died in November with COVID, making it the deadliest month of the pandemic in Indiana. A CDC panel voted tonight on who should be the first to get a COVID-19 vaccine. The group of advisors voted 13 to 1 to recommend that health care workers and residents of long-term care facilities be first in line for whichever vaccines get emergency use approval from the FDA. That aligns with Indiana's plan for a vaccine rollout. An FDA group will meet on the 10th of this month to consider emergency use of two vaccines. Doctors are finding that pneumonia can be a complication of COVID-19 when the infection progresses to a patient's lungs and this can make recovery even tougher. WRTV's Troy Washington spoke with a woman who explains sometimes the symptoms of COVID pneumonia are not obvious. I didn't know, like, you can have horrible pneumonia with no cough. And that's, this COVID, it's like bionic. It's weird. Elaine Robbins says her husband is battling COVID-19 pneumonia, something experts say that they're seeing more and more of in patients. Her husband, Mark, appeared to be fine at first. November 10th, he came home from work just with a headache um, and was tired. But I mean, that's him half the time, you know, comes home, it's like tired with headache. But he's like, I really don't feel good. In a matter of a few weeks, this family's life has been flipped upside down by the coronavirus. So he was just so tired. He could not get up, but we didn't know that was because his oxygen levels were dangerously low. He could barely walk when we got him to the hospital. If they said if we had waited any longer, he would have died. And then he's just gone downhill. For this mother and wife, it hurts to see the love of her life suddenly fighting for his life. My three daughters, <laughs> it's their dad, it's my husband. I mean, there's a good chance they're gonna lose their dad and I'm gonna lose my husband. Doctors are still learning about COVID-19 pneumonia, but they say in patients with the diagnosis, usually both lungs are affected instead of just one. When it does ravage your lungs, it's like a tornado. Even though she says doctors have called her husband's situation dire, she's not losing hope and still believes a miraculous recovery can happen. Working for you, Troy Washington, WRTV. Well, last week, Mark received convalescent plasma, and according to the family, he's been showing steady signs of improvement, although he is still on a ventilator. Checking in now with Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory. Kevin, it is chilly outside. Oof. Cold, yes. Temperatures will be as cold as they've been all fall. The coldest morning so far is 26 degrees. Now, I want to jump back. You might think, oh, these are current temperatures. No, these were our high temperatures, 34 in Indy, Bloomington and Terre Haute at 36. There's been very little movement on the thermometer because of the cloud cover that's been in place. But now that the clouds are starting to clear, we'll see these temperatures fall. 29 in Lafayette, leading the way into the 20s. Indianapolis sits at 30 degrees. As we mentioned, across eastern Indiana, northeastern portions of the state, the clouds are still hanging in there, but as the sky clears, the wind will also calm down. That's a recipe for cold temperatures. The winds right now generally 10 to 15 miles per hour north and east of Indy, but they'll drop to about 5 to 10 miles per hour through the overnight hours. Temperatures in the morning? Lower 20s to the north from Logansport to Peru. Temperatures in the lower 20s along Interstate 70. The record as you look at these is three below zero. We're not going to be in record territory, but I think cold enough as we step into the month of December. Kevin, thank you. Hiring Hoosiers is connecting you to career resources and keeping track of job opportunities in central Indiana. One company went looking specifically to an area where it could make an impact, and now dozens of jobs are coming to the east side of Indianapolis. WRTV's Cameron Riddle shows you how a new facility will offer more than just work for residents. 
On the east side of Indianapolis, there was investment, construction, and 100 jobs coming to the area. We knew there were people in Indiana who need help, uh, who need opportunity, and who are ready for that opportunity. And so when we looked around, we, as we said, we wanted to uh, impact community of color, and we wanted to impact a community that was looking for opportunity. Bloomington-based Cook Medical didn't have to look far to find the right fit. In 2021, the area near 38th and Sheridan will be home to a new 40,000 square foot manufacturing facility. An abandoned church that sits there now is in the process of being demolished. Pete Youngman, the president of Cook Group and Cook Medical, says their future workers will make catheters, needles, wire, and other devices doctors use during surgery. That's one of the things that we take a lot of pride in is that we, make, we don't make cell phones. We make products that help save people's lives. Goodwill Industries will operate the building for Cook Medical, hiring employees while offering wraparound services like mental and physical health services and support for substance use. But before the first employee reports for work, Cook Medical has set a goal to hire all minority contractors to build the facility. And our goal is to hire people as close and as local to the community as we can. We don't want this to be a facility where people drive in and drive out. We want this to be part of the community. Yonkman says everything about the project is intentional, from its location along the future Indigo Purple Line to the company program, giving workers access to free education beginning at the high school level and continuing all the way up to a master's degree. Local community leader Ashley Gervitz says her east side community is excited about the change in opportunity that could have a lasting impact. When we look at especially a neighborhood like 46226, 218, 205, uh, often or not, we've been overlooked or opportunities have been never fully delivered. I'm really excited to see once everything's fully operational and hearing the stories to come um, even further um, when the next generation is leading our area. Cameron Riddle, WRTV. Well, the hiring process for the future Cook Medical Facility on the east side will begin in January. Most production physicians begin at $13 an hour. We'll let you know when they start accepting applications. Marion County students return to mandatory virtual learning this week until at least the middle of January. Other districts have had to switch to virtual learning because of staffing shortages. WRTV's Alyssa Donovan explains how one school has managed to keep education consistent for students this year despite COVID-19. The Indiana Digital Learning School is a fully accredited public school in Indiana. It serves students from 92 counties from K through 12th grade. And this year, their enrollment increased by 2,000 students. Seven, three. Including second grader Mackenzie Dahill. One more, 11. This is Mackenzie's first year learning completely virtually through the Indiana Digital Learning School. Uh, the main reason was because of COVID. And Marie Dahill says her daughter was uncomfortable wearing a mask all day and would sometimes develop a rash. Mackenzie also struggled with the e-learning offered by her school district back in March and April. So Dahill found another option. Our students have a full schedule Monday through Friday. Uh, they attend um, a minimum of five classes a day. The school follows Indiana state standards for curriculums and lessons. And Mackenzie isn't the only new student this year. COVID-19 increased enrollment from 4,000 students to 6,000. We had families wanting to just be proactive and, and go ahead and just switch to a full-time virtual program because they felt maybe there was more consistency in that with the unknown ahead. For this student, that consistency has been key. I like it more because I learn more than what I did. The school provides all the supplies to ensure students are getting a full education like they would in person. HP laptop, printer, all her books. They sent us math cubes for like learning hundreds and thousands. Meanwhile, the district Mackenzie would have been attending, school town of Highland has gone back and forth between e-learning and in person. Dahill says she talked to some parents who say their students are doing okay with the changes, but she knows this was the right choice for her kid. And even when things return to normal, Mackenzie says digital learning is where she'll be. I would stay with it. I'm Alyssa Donovan, WRTV. 
The Indiana Digital School has received a lot of interest because of the pandemic. They are accepting applications for students, but right now they are only enrolling if other students leave. For more details on the Indiana Digital Learning School, visit our website at WRTV.com. Still ahead on WRTV News at 7, positive news about a COVID vaccine has engaged couples holding out hope. What wedding experts say about tying the knot next year. But first, backlog scams and shortages. The IRS is answering questions about taxes and stimulus checks after months of frustration from some Hoosiers. This has been a frustrating year for many Hoosiers when it comes to the IRS. Many of you have complained about not being able to get through on the phone, delays in getting your federal stimulus checks and tax refunds, as well as scams. The Rebound Indiana is WRTV's initiative to help families get back on their feet. WRTV investigates Kara Kenny was able to take your questions and concerns directly to the Internal Revenue Service. At the beginning of the pandemic, the IRS shut down many of its call centers and paper processing centers, leaving a backlog and many Hoosiers frustrated. I can't get any information. Doretta New of Indianapolis filed her taxes via mail on March 11th. Doretta waited and waited to get her federal refund and her stimulus check. She couldn't get a hold of a live person at the IRS. I don't even know if they have it. I'm to the point where should I re remail a copy of it? You know, how long am I going to have to wait? <laughs> Are they not working? <laughs> Doretta's tax return was likely stuck sitting at a paper processing center that was shut down because of the pandemic. She finally got her tax refund and stimulus check three months later in June. Were those uh, times ac acceptable and what is being done uh, for the future? Remember, most people, over 160 million Americans, receive their uh, economic impact payment either through direct deposit, a debit card, or a check. Uh, most of it was direct deposit and done quickly over the course of a couple weeks. That's a monumental effort that we were able to accomplish. We took your concerns to Luis Garcia, an IRS spokesperson for the Midwest region. Can you tell us what's being done to address that. He told us they have as many people working from home as possible. We do have a backlog. Uh, we've been working through it as we can, but remember we're at uh, limited capacity in terms of what we can physically do. Uh, the call centers, uh, the, the big mail processing facilities, those are really uh, not at the full capacity that we'd like them to be, but we're adhering to the laws in, in the states that we operate. A few million Americans still have not received their stimulus checks, but mostly people who don't normally file taxes. If you missed yours, you can still get your money when you file your taxes in 2021. It will be based on your 2020 uh, uh, tax status. So, Some Hoosiers receive stimulus checks for their deceased family members, like Jay Tilden in Beach Grove. So I was surprised um, and immediately thought about how this was something that potentially was fraud. An independent watchdog report says the Treasury and IRS sent almost 1.1 million payments totaling nearly 1.4 billion to deceased individuals. So has that been rectified? Well, remember, some people, uh, uh, when they receive checks for uh, uh, somebody who's deceased, that deceased person, uh, or their estate, I should say, uh, is legitimately eligible for that payment. WRTV Investigates has also warned you about scams in which criminals pose as the IRS, usually via phone or text message. Be very careful. Uh, remember, IRS isn't going to text you. We're not going to send you a direct message via social media. And remember, the IRS will never threaten you or demand payment by a particular method like gift cards. The IRS will usually send you a letter in the mail. As of May, the IRS added more than 3,000 phone operators to help answer calls, but they encourage you to search irs.gov first. If you call us, please be patient. Understand that uh, we're not working anywhere near the capacity we, we want to be. We absolutely want to be this sort of agency that picks up on the first ring. Unfortunately, we're not able to do that at this time. As of now, Congress has not approved a second round of stimulus checks. So if you get a text or an email about that, delete it. It's a scam. Working for you, Kara Kenny, WRTV. A dry stretch of days straight ahead. Tomorrow, one of those with some sunshine will hit 43. We'll talk about the pattern change later next week coming up. 
News of a coronavirus vaccine is providing hope for couples that plan to get married next year. The editor of Sophisticated Weddings magazine estimates the wedding industry will lose between 400 and 600 million dollars this year. Wedding planners say many couples delayed their weddings till at least once in 2020. They say the vaccine news means couples with ceremonies scheduled for the fall of 2021 are not canceling. Wedding experts don't expect destination weddings to make a strong comeback yet but say ceremonies with more than a couple people appear more likely. Remember the warm days of November? I saw lots of people out putting up holiday decorations when you could uh, not wear gloves. Your hands weren't numb. Here's the result of some of that. I bet the Savoy family was out working on all of this in November, and it shines beautifully this evening. Doug Savoy, thanks for sharing this picture. He entered, entered this in our photo contest, and you can too, and I'd be happy to share it uh, right here on WRTV. Just go to WRTV.com. The photo contest is Holiday Lights. And if you win, you'll be able to load up a carload of folks and go to the Christmas Nights of Lights at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Temperatures, they're the story over the next 24 hours. Then they'll kind of level out after that. Spinning to the east, there's the area of snow that we had last night. And as that pulls farther away, it will help relax our wind. High pressure centered over Wisconsin and Minnesota, sliding toward the Great Lakes will clear our sky, calm the wind a bit. Look at how the cold temperatures stretch all the way to the deep south. There's nothing real Arctic here, but unusually far to the south, the freezing temperatures will reach into Florida tonight. 29 in Lafayette. You just follow 231 south all the way to Greencastle, Cloverdale, then over to Martinsville. Temperatures are in the 20s. Colder in western Indiana because skies have cleared there first. Temperatures over the next three days remain below average. That's really for most of the seven-day forecast, but we're dry during that stretch with just a slight chance of a shower on a Saturday. There are the temperatures tomorrow morning. I think we've hammered that point. Dress in layers. Temperatures cold, but at least it won't be windy. 45 is your average high this time of year. We're staying below the bar in most occasions. The wind tomorrow, much calmer. That helps with some sunshine. 43 won't feel that bad. Certainly it'll feel better than today. Some spots will struggle to hit 40 degrees. On Thursday, more cloud cover, especially the southern half of the state. Friday will end the work week with more sunshine, back to 45 degrees. As you look at the seven-day forecast, Temperatures over the next seven days, generally low to mid 40s in the 20s for overnight lows. The 9th through the 15th, taking us into the middle of December, looks like we'll have above average temperatures during that stretch. We'll be right back with more news after this. Well, it's a big week for the 20th annual WRTV Toy Drive. Drop-off sites for new unwrapped toys are at used store locations across central Indiana. We will also be collecting items at four Indianapolis area Simon Malls this Saturday, December 5th. For more information, go to WRTV.com slash toy drive. You can also find information there about making a financial donation. If your family is going all out decorating your home for the holidays, we want to see it. Share a picture of your light display for a chance to win tickets to the Christmas Nights of Light show at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. The contest ends on December 6th. For more info, go to WRTV.com and click on the contest tab. Your photo could also show up on the WRTV Storm Team forecast at 7. And that just happened for the Savoy family. There are many homes and neighborhoods across central Indiana where you have to tap the brakes, drive slower to check it out. Temperatures tomorrow, you got to roll up the windows in the car. Still cold start, lower 20s. We're in the 40s next three days, as you can see. Tomorrow, we won't wait on the sunshine. We'll have sunshine uh, through most of the day. That'll help a little bit. Mark and Amanda? It will definitely help. Thanks for making WRTV your choice for news. Our next newscast is tonight at 11.